Hey guys, so I haven't been out in the shop for a little while and uh, got a couple of things to uh, let you know about. Uh, first off, well today's plan is to turn this bar of aluminum, 7 8 inch bar of aluminum, uh, into uh, a bunch of uh, pulleys. I did some experimentation on the uh, weekend. I was trying a few different sizes of, uh, of pulleys and pitches. This is uh, they, well, this was the first try, and then I turned off the uh, ridges to see if it would work well as just an idler pulley, and I decided that the idler pulleys all have uh, indentations on them as it is. And I was just trying to figure out what size was the perfect size for that belt for a 15-tooth uh, drive uh, sprocket, and uh, I found out that that one right there was the perfect size for it. So I'm going to crank out about six of those. Um, of those... Three will be bored out to uh, half an inch to take uh, bearings. And uh, two will be bored out to a quarter inch to mount on the, on the drive shaft that's going to, you know, uh, you know, connect the two Y-axis belts. And then one's going to be bored out to just under 200 thou uh, to uh, mount on uh, one of those stepper motors over there on the on the beige box there. That's assuming I don't decide to go with the bigger stepper motors. At this point might not be a terrible idea. These uh, belts are fairly heavy and certainly uh, might be a bit of a problem to drive or or you know like especially when it's being bent that at that tight a, a radius it might induce or cause a fair bit of friction. Anyways so a couple of things just to, to note uh, before I say anything. Uh, Chief, there's the uh, Replacement shaft that I got. I just received it yesterday, and what here's the plan I'm gonna I'm gonna make of it. It doesn't look like it's gonna be particularly difficult to reproduce. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new one of these, but at the taper end instead of a taper, I'm gonna turn a shoulder and a thread, a straight thread, and uh, then I'll make you know one of these that will uh, just simply screw on. Ooh, bunch of oil on there. Anyways, so it'll just screw on. And uh, I'm also going to have a look around so you don't have to give up on your, uh, on your chuck. I've got a couple of dead drills lying around. And I'm pretty sure a couple of those had, uh, um, had threaded ends. They weren't uh, on a taper, they were threaded. So I might be able to just uh, you know, either make the two things the same thread or I'll just bore out the chuck and, uh, and re-thread it to whatever I thread this to. In any case, I'm going to keep this one as a as a as a you know sample kind of a thing. I won't actually modify this one because it might be hard and it may not be, but uh, I prefer to do it myself because I want to make the shoulder bigger than the diameter of this piece here. In any case, because I'm planning on turning about a half inch uh, coarse thread on the end of uh, of the one that I make, and if I want any kind of a shoulder, it's going to be a fair bit bigger than this. Now, one of the guys. Uh, had asked, and I apologize, I can't remember your name, was you seeing a DTC 28, or 78, wastegate solenoid fault, or I believe it was 28, regardless, he was saying it was a wastegate solenoid fault, and he wanted to know where the wastegate solenoid was, and I couldn't tell him because uh, my engine is a non-turbo engine, but looking at uh, the description for it out of, you know, the, you know, official GM diesel supplement for 94, um, the best bet to finding it would be to trace back the uh, wastegate actuator valve vacuum uh, line back to uh, to the uh, solenoid because it looks like from this diagram here it just goes directly back. Uh, but the thing was uh, you had said that you believe that the guy did a, uh, a vacuum pump delete on his machine. And just to give you some idea, I did describe it to you in a PM, but but the vacuum pump is located right here. Now I don't have mine mounted. Uh, there's the idler where the AC pump would normally go, and here's the uh, spot where the uh, thank you, where the uh, power steering pump normally goes, and this would be where the vacuum pump goes. And to give you some idea what the vacuum pump looks like, um, oh, where did I put that? I thought it was sitting on the stairs here. Hang on, I'll pause you and I'll go and find it. <laughs> Okay, so that's what the vacuum pump looks like. This is a particularly crusty model. I can't remember if it was mounted that way, that way, or that way. Um, 
I'm going to guess it was probably that way, just judging by the way the line comes out. But I couldn't tell you for sure. Regardless, that'll give you some idea. And it, like I said, it would be sitting in uh, in this position right here. Now I'm planning on doing. Yeah, I think that that would have to be the way it would sit. Actually, is that way. Um, oh damn camera! I won't turn the light on. Okay. Well, anyways, now hopefully you get the idea. Um, and uh, I wasn't planning on using this. I was just going to do a delete on mine as well because I don't need uh, any any vacuum for anything because I'm going to do an EGR delete. So that's the only thing on my truck that needs vacuum. And if I put an aftermarket uh, AC system in it, you can get those that don't need vacuum anyway. So I wouldn't have to worry about it. So if you want that and you're willing to pay shipping, I'll send it to you because that thing will probably be pretty expensive. But I suspect that it might almost be cheaper to just buy a new one from Rock Auto, regardless. Anyways, that relates to this. If the guy that you bought your truck off of um, did a vacuum delete on his one, then that probably is why you're getting the DTCs. Um, because he probably removed all the vacuum lines, probably removed the solenoid as well. And if he did that, then there's no, you know, like the computer is going to detect, you know, like that the uh, that the line going to it is uh, is not being, you know, there's no load on it because it does the same thing with the EGR solenoids. That's one thing I'll have to leave in place when I do an EGR delete is you have to leave the EGR solenoids in place. Regardless, yeah. So you want to verify first if he uh, left the vacuum pump in place, and then uh, if need be, I can uh, I can give you. Uh, all the information on uh, on this. It's two pages worth of talking about this uh, wastegate solenoid fault and it sounds like the first thing that they tell you to look at is the vacuum uh, uh, how much vacuum it's pulling and uh, if not there's a fairly complicated uh, thing here but basically it all, the next thing it would come down to is it would come down to whether or not you have continuity between the uh, computer and the uh, solenoid and from there just to give you some idea, the line, like the wire colors going into the uh, wastegate actuators or wastegate solenoid uh, is pink, uh, presumably with a black stripe and yellow. So it's going to be pink and black and yellow on the other line. And you could probably uh, pull the connection at the computer, ring out that line between here and there, and see if you got continuity. You'll just have to make sure that you get the right one. And it's PA3 is the line at the PCM for that. So hopefully that'll help. If not, you can always just PM me again and I'll try and do my best to help here. Um, anyways, I'm going to get uh, on this and uh, see if I can't crank out some uh, some blanks for my uh, pulleys. Okay, so I'm just taking a, a skim coat here on the outside of this and then I'm going to start machining it down. There's no reason for me to be advancing it so slow. I just like the shiny look. But uh, what I'm going to do is i got to go in the house and go grab my uh, plans to see what diameter i got to machine this down to. Uh, I'm not going to turn a flange on these ones, or whatever you want to call that, groove. Uh, I'm just going to count on the, uh, the actual uh, machine uh, lines, you know, to, uh, to uh, hold the belt in place. And if it's well aligned, uh, the belt shouldn't pull out. Because the belt is constrained by the uh, by the uh, uh, stage, you know, the X or the Y stage. Anyways, this is going to be going for a little while longer, so I'll pause you guys. And, well, I'll just let you know what I'm doing is I'm going to cut about seven. These are three quarter of an inch deep. I'm going to give myself a inch of allowance, well, a quarter inch of allowance on uh, on each end of it for facing and all that after I part them off. And uh, I think, well, we'll see what we're going to do. I think what I'm going to end up doing is, is yeah, that's going to be hard. I think what I'm going to have to do is, once I machine the, them all to the correct diameter, I'll suck it back into the chuck, and then I'll work on them one at a time. I'll cut the uh, inner uh, portion of it. Uh, which for four of them is going to be, no, three of them is going to be, 
half inch diameter, three sixteenths deep on each side, and uh, then the inner diameter, like for the center section of it, will be, uh, will be slightly less than half an inch to uh, have the bearing have something to butt up against. Anyways, uh, yeah, like I, like I said, I think I already said, but there should be enough uh, blanks here to uh, make seven pulleys, and I only need six. That's just one for uh, for extra there. Anyways, I'll pause you guys near the near the end of the cut, so I'm gonna have to uh, do something here. Uh, just uh, knocking off for the night. Uh, I turned my uh, shaft to diameter and uh, and turned out one uh, one pulley so far. I'm just about to bore the hole for the bearing to go in. But uh, I'm going to knock off. So I will see you guys tomorrow.